EPCO Educational Topic 47, Menopause. This is the story of Miss Menopause. She has just had 12 months of amenorrhea, which by definition makes her menopausal. She is 51 years old, which is the median age of menopause in North America. The menopausal transition is a natural transition for most women, and it is important to remember that women may spend most of their lives in the postmenopausal years. The objectives of this video are to define menopause and describe associated changes in the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. Describe menopausal symptoms and physical exam findings. Discuss management options for patients with perimenopausal and menopausal symptoms. Counsel patients about the menopausal transition. And finally, discuss long-term changes associated with menopause. Why do women go through menopause? Menopause occurs due to the program loss of ovarian follicles. Let's chat for a moment about a woman's germ cells or oocytes. Remember that the number of germ cells or oocytes peak when she is 20 weeks in utero at six to seven million. By the time she is born, she has one million. At puberty, she has 400,000. At the time of menopause, she has two to 300 remaining. The hypothalamus produces GnRH, which stimulates the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary produces FSH and LH. This stimulates the ovary to produce estrogen. With advancing age, as the number of oocytes decline, estrogen levels decline, the remaining oocytes become increasingly resistant to FSH, and FSH plasma concentrations increase. At the time of menopause, FSH levels are greater than 30. Beginning around age 40, as the number of a woman's ovarian follicles decrease, there are changes that occur to her menstrual cycle. She may notice shortening or lengthening of her cycles. The luteal phase of the cycle stays the same at 13 to 14 days. The variation in cycle length is related to changes in the follicular phase. Women may start noticing that their cycle length is now 21 days. Remember that the cycle length is from the first day of one period to the first day of the next period. Hot flashes are the most common symptom of the menopause transition. In U.S. women, the prevalence of hot flashes is 50 to 82%. Women describe the sudden sensation of extreme heat in the upper body, particularly the face, neck, and chest. These episodes typically last one to five minutes. For many women, the hot flashes are tolerable and do not require any medical therapy. 33% of women who experience these hot flashes, however, will experience more than 10 hot flashes a day. For some women, the hot flashes are associated with significant adverse outcomes such as hampered jaw productivity and sleep deprivation. Some women can simply use lifestyle modifications for their hot flashes. Other women, however, are motivated to pursue medical therapy, often based on the severity of their symptoms. The most effective treatment for hot flashes is systemic hormone therapy. On average, there's a 75% reduction in hot flashes, both in frequency and severity. If she has a uterus, the hormone therapy needs to be both estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen alone can only be used if she does not have a uterus, for estrogen alone will increase her risk of endometrial cancer. Are there risks of hormone therapy? Yes. The Women's Health Initiative was a large, randomized, placebo-controlled trial. This trial demonstrated that there was an increased risk of breast cancer, coronary heart disease, stroke, and venous thrombolic event in women taking estrogen and progesterone versus placebo. There were, however, a decreased risk of colon cancer and fracture in women taking estrogen and progesterone. For women only receiving estrogen, there was an increased risk of thromboembolic event, but not an increased risk of cardiovascular event or breast cancer. It's important to note that it's difficult to generalize the findings from the WHI on younger, more recently menopausal women, since the WHI examined women aged 50 to 77 years old, and many were past the menopausal transition at the time of the study. What other options are available for treatment of hot flashes? SSRIs and SNRIs are effective treatments, and they reduce hot flashes around 50 to 62 percent. Herbal therapies, such as black cohosh or phytoestrogens, have not been shown to be superior to placebo. Bioidentical hormones are not recommended over conventional hormone therapy for there is limited evidence on their safety, purity, potency, and efficacy. Declining estrogen levels can induce a change in women's sleep cycles independent of hot flashes, and sleep disturbances are one of the most common and disabling effects of menopause. Bone density decreases in men and women with aging, however the rate of bone loss increases with menopause. Bone density diminishes at a rate of 1-2% to per year in postmenopausal women compared with 0.5% per year in perimenopausal women. The vaginal epithelium and uroepithelium are also all estrogen-dependent tissues. Pelvic organ prolapse and atrophic urethritis can result when the paravaginal tissues that support the bladder and rectum become atrophic. 
Up to 40% of menopausal women will experience one or more symptoms of vaginal atrophy. Vaginal atrophy may present with itching and burning, and the loss of vaginal rugae and the loss of elasticity can cause a narrowing and shortening of the vagina. Vaginal atrophy and vaginal dryness can also become symptomatic during intercourse and can cause significant dyspareunia. Vaginal lubrications, vaginal moisturizers, and vaginal estrogens can all provide symptom relief. This concludes the APCO educational video on menopause. In summary, menopause is a natural transition for most women. We have discussed the hormonal changes that occur with menopause, discussed symptoms and physical exam findings, and management options that are available if a woman needs it.